recently, scientists have created the first time crystal. It sounds like something straight out of science fiction, doesn't it? As if it's some kind of mysterious component for a time machine. But this isn't quite true. In reality, time crystals are more like a perpetual motion machine. But what exactly are they, and how do they work? Let's find out. First, let's talk about crystals in general. Take a regular crystal and examine it under a microscope. You'll see that it, like everything around us, consists of molecules and atoms. What makes them special is that their atoms are arranged in a repeating pattern. For example, let's take a salt crystal. If we look at it under a microscope, we'll see a repeating pattern inside it. And this pattern is the same everywhere, no matter how small or large the piece of salt is or what shape it is. In the whole crystal, the pattern will be unchanged. And it will always remain like this, no matter how much time has passed. The salt crystal will still have the same repeating pattern of atoms tomorrow, next week, or even next year. Now let's move on to time crystals. They're just like regular ones, but with a twist. You probably know that all atoms around us are constantly moving even at very, very low temperatures, when everything freezes and nothing can stop them. Also, their movement is random, chaotic, and unpredictable, just kind of jiggling in space. However, in time crystals, everything is different. Not only are their atoms arranged in a repeating pattern, just like in regular crystals, but they also move in a looped, endlessly repeating dance. Now that's weird. The atoms in time crystals are like an endless, looped dance party. All the guests repeat the same moves in the same order over and over again. This dance, or repeating pattern, can be completely different. The movements can be basic and simple, or very complex and chaotic, but they have to be looped. Hence the name. Regular crystals repeat themselves endlessly in space. And time crystals repeat themselves in both space and time. Now, just to clarify, these crystals aren't the kind we're used to. They don't look like diamonds or emeralds or anything like that. To be honest, they don't look like much at all. The beautiful name time crystal describes a new, very strange kind of matter that changes in quantum states over a period of time. Basically, it's just the dance movements of atoms. So, unfortunately, you can't just put one on your shelf to jiggle there. It's not a beautiful piece of quartz. It's more like a curiosity in physics. But that doesn't mean that these crystals aren't cool. Actually, there's something very unusual and interesting about them. You see, the movements we talked about persist even at absolute zero temperature. That is, even when in normal materials and objects, atoms would freeze, lose energy, and stop moving, in time crystals, they continue their endless dance as if nothing happened. Oh, and that's just the beginning. Scientists are also stunned because the existence of time crystals violates the second law of thermodynamics. This law states that over time, any system becomes random and disordered. A warm object will distribute its heat and become cold. A vase balancing on the edge of a table will fall one day, and so on. But time crystals are like, eh, we don't care about your thermo something something. Not only do they move constantly in the same pattern no matter what happens to them, but they also don't need any energy to do so. Even if they don't receive energy from anywhere, they don't stop dancing and don't become less structured or organized. Yep, we've created a beautiful, incomprehensible miracle of nature that violates the laws of physics. Isn't that impressive? But how is this even possible? And why? Does it mean that there's nothing that can stop these atoms? And most importantly, could it be a clue for the secrets of the perpetual motion machine? Well, it's quite complicated. Once again, quantum mechanics is blowing up scientists' brains. This time, with another mystery. A unique and unusual behavior that we're still trying to understand. Since it's a relatively new area of research, we aren't yet sure exact work, 
and how we can use them. By the way, how did we even discover these guys, and how were they created? Time crystals were first predicted to exist in 2012 by theoretical physicist Frank Wilshek. Not all physicists accepted the theory at the time. Many believed it was impossible to violate the second law of thermodynamics. But the universe doesn't really care what scientists think, and Frank Wilshek won a Nobel Prize for his work. However, it took a few more years for scientists to actually create and observe the first time crystals. It happened in 2016, when scientists from the University of Maryland managed to create one using ions of the rare earth metal ytterbium. Here's what they did. First, they took a regular crystal and really, really cooled down the atoms inside it to near absolute zero. As already mentioned, absolute zero is the temperature at which atoms stop moving. So far, we don't know how to reach this temperature, but we can get very, very close to it. We can slow down the atoms so much that they almost stop. So they took all these atoms and made them move really slow. And then they started shocking them with lasers. It made the atoms switch between different states over and over again without absorbing any energy from the laser. You could say that the laser gave them a beat and made them dance by themselves without anyone's help. The result was the first ever time crystal. The Maryland scientists' experiment was a major breakthrough and showed that time crystals were a real observable phenomenon. It made quite a fuss in the scientific community and was a huge step forward in the strange world of quantum mechanics. Unfortunately, there was one problem. Such perpetual motion only truly exists forever in ideal time crystals. And since the time crystals in our experiments weren't ideal, they lasted only a few minutes before they melted and started behaving normally again. What does it mean? It means that so far, unfortunately, we can't create a perpetual motion machine. If we try to do something like that, time crystals will immediately melt. But this didn't stop the scientists. And in 2021, we finally made another breakthrough. Researchers at Google, in collaboration with physicists at Stanford, Princeton, and other universities, used Google's quantum computer much bigger and much more stable time crystal. You see, quantum computers are different from your typical laptop. They don't use regular bits and don't work with silicon. Instead, they work with quantum bits that can exist in multiple states at the same time. This allows the time crystals to keep oscillating in a repeating pattern, even when all other motion has stopped. All the previous crystals were short-lived, made a couple of flip-flops, and immediately melted. But now, scientists have created a crystal bigger and better than ever before. So what does this mean for us? Well, time crystals could hold the key to unlocking new technologies and a deeper understanding of the quantum world. For starters, they'll help us better explore the world of quantum mechanics. They challenge our understanding of time and the way that matter behaves. In classical physics, things are either static or they're moving in a predictable, repeating pattern. But time crystals don't care. They enjoy both static and moving at the same time. They can also help us create cool new technologies. They can bring us closer to creating full-fledged quantum computers. Engineers have struggled for years to create something that could serve as memory in quantum computers. And now they could use time crystals for that their repeating patterns of motion might be able to store information. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? We'll also be able to create many other cool things with them. For example, we could use their repetitive behavior to create a new kind of ultra-precise clock. Time crystals are still a relatively new area of research. Right now, we're mostly trying to understand their unique properties and characteristics. Scientists are also performing experiments to study their behavior under different conditions. For example, in different temperatures and magnetic fields. In other words, this field of research is still in its early stages. But time crystals are a truly mind-boggling discovery that shows just how strange and wonderful the universe can be. They're already attracting a great deal of interest and attention from scientists around the world. 
I can't wait to see how many exciting and groundbreaking discoveries will come from this area in the future. Recently, Chinese scientists discovered something interesting on the moon, an unusual crystal. Moreover, they found out that this crystal contains an element that can literally replace nuclear fuel. Let's find out more. The composition of the moon has long remained a mystery to us. Half a century has already passed since the Apollo mission. Unfortunately, we haven't traveled to the moon much since then. So it's not surprising that it's not so easy for us to study it. But recently, we've made a breakthrough in this area. In December 2020, Chinese scientists sent the Chang'e 5 probe to the moon. The mission was named after the ancient Chinese deity of the moon, Chang'e. Quite poetic, isn't it? Anyway, after the probe went to the nearest side of the moon, it spent several days digging through the surface and rocks and then returned to Earth. In total, it collected about four pounds of various lunar rocks, like basalt, solidified lava, and so on. And yeah, maybe it doesn't sound too impressive, but it's actually a mini breakthrough. After all, we hadn't received any lunar samples since 1976. And these samples are very important for learning the history of our world. We've been struggling for many years to find out, for example, how the moon was born at all. Yes, there were a lot of theories, but we still couldn't find any proper evidence for any of them. But thanks to the latest missions and some computer simulations, scientists finally found out the truth. The moon was born when some random dwarf planet crashed into our Earth many millions of years ago. This dwarf planet was slightly smaller than Mars. The fragments of the Earth went into space, but some of them stayed in our orbit. Then they stuck together and formed the moon. It sounds horrifying, but in reality, the birth of the moon was the best thing to ever happen to our planet. If it weren't for this beautiful satellite, all our oceans would be small puddles. Life wouldn't have appeared on Earth at all. So this is already an amazing discovery, but that's still not all. Studying the collected rocks, scientists from the Beijing Research Institute discovered something unusual, a rare lunar crystal. Looks pretty boring, doesn't it? just some tiny transparent monocrystal about the thickness of a human hair. We've already found such things on the moon before. These crystals were formed as a result of volcanic activity, just like some garnets on the Earth. And yep, the place where they discovered these crystals also suffered from volcanoes 1.2 billion years ago. That means that this tiny baby is over a billion years old. But that's not the most important thing. It's the fact that this crystal is made of a unique material, the one that we've never seen before. Researchers from the International Mineralogical Association have confirmed that such a composition can't be found anywhere on Earth. The crystal was named Chang'e-site, again after the same moon deity. And this is another achievement. This is the sixth previously unknown mineral that we've found on the moon and the first one found by China. Now, it has become the third country in the world to make such a lunar discovery. However, this tiny crystal still wasn't the only remarkable thing they found. After studying this gem and about 140,000 other lunar particles, scientists have discovered something else. They found helium-3. Why is it so important? Because this is one of the elements that feed the sun and other stars in our universe. We tend to say stuff like, put out the sun, the sun is burning, and so on. And this is one of the reasons why many people actually think that the sun is a huge fireball. But it's not. Its burning is actually a completely different process, which is called nuclear fusion. The process itself is quite simple. During this reaction, hydrogen in the star turns into helium. But this simple process is actually one of the most violent and insane reactions in the universe. There's a real boiling broth of particles inside the sun. The hydrogen nuclei that jump and rush there are constantly repelling each other since all of them are positively charged. And so they could continue to boil and chill around without bothering anyone if it weren't for the stars. The stars turned out to be cheaters. 
They have such strong gravity that they basically grab billions of these little atoms and squeeze them together. Combining with each other, these atoms create new heavy elements, like the mentioned helium. And when this happens, they throw a lot of energy into space. And that's how the sun burns. At the same time, it spreads so much energy that we can't even imagine. Okay, so what is helium-3? Well, this is an element to which even the sun can say, whoa dude, you should calm down. The fusion of helium-3 atoms releases even more energy than in typical nuclear fusion. And most importantly, it doesn't pollute the atmosphere with harmful things like radiation. We have very, very little helium-3 on Earth. Its prevalence in our atmosphere is about one in a million. And besides, it's constantly trying to escape from us back into space. Probably feel some bad vibes from us. However, scientists have recently found out that there's a place that contains a lot of this element. Yep, you guessed it, it's the moon. We think that there's more helium-3 on the moon than on Earth because of the solar winds. The sun has been hammering on the moon with its helium-3 for billions of years, so now it's all over the place. It's still not too much if you compare it, for example, with Jupiter or Saturn. But don't forget how much energy it can release. For your information, with only 25 tons of helium-3, it's possible to provide America with energy for an entire year. Now, there are 35,000 tons of it here on Earth and more than a million tons on the moon. Only these sources could feed the entire US for thousands of years. So basically, in the future, helium-3 may become a new source of fuel. And it's better than nuclear fuel in basically everything. Helium-3 won't leave any harmful waste and radiation. It's more powerful and not that dangerous. In other words, this environmentally friendly and efficient energy could be a revolution for our planet. Sounds cool, huh? So, what are we waiting for? Grab the shovels, you might say. But there's a little problem here. Unfortunately, we haven't yet come up with anything as wildly strong and hot as the stars. To use helium-3, we need crazy temperatures and pressure. We need a thermonuclear reactor, and we have no idea how to build it. Yet. And even if we could heat it up to such temperatures and get the needed pressure, we still don't really know how to handle helium-3 correctly. Therefore, even if we have an infinite amount of helium-3, we still won't be able to use it. But still, there's a great power behind helium-3, so it's not surprising that different countries have already started a race for nuclear resources. Now that Chang'e 5 has discovered a new helium-3 deposit on the nearest side of the moon, this race can become downright global. For example, China already plans a new lunar mission in 2024, Chang'e 6. During this mission, they want to collect the first samples from the far side of the moon. As you can see, finding this lunar crystal was very important for us. These crystals can help us find new ways to create helium-3. And if we manage to do that, humankind will enter a new era. But to do this, we still have to solve a number of problems. How to deliver a bunch of these lunar crystals to Earth, how to make them produce energy, and so on. Let's hope that in the future these issues will be resolved and we'll find a way to produce clean, safe, unlimited energy. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.